Hey guys, how you doing? Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk you through the website evaluation section, which um, is part of obviously your ICT core skills course. And um, the whole point of the website evaluation is just to basically help you guys identify credible um, websites. Okay, so therefore, when you're writing up a report, um, a research report, an essay, whatever, um, you will hopefully gain the knowledge and skills needed to make sure that website that you're using um, is credible okay so the first thing you should do is on your middle page go down to the website evaluation section and you want to download the website evaluation document and also the website evaluation help sheet okay just to let you know there's also a credible versus non-credible a uh, pdf here as well as a video a uh, giving uh, some really good information um, once you've got that downloaded, then make three copies, okay? So all you need to do is just right click, um, duplicate, or just, once you open the file, just save as. Right, so let's open up this document. So right at the very top, you've got a header. In your header, you should have your name, um, the group that you're in, and also the date, okay? Once you've completed that, we then start to populate the the actual evaluation itself so the first thing you want to put in is the url of the website that you're using now what i'm going to suggest to you guys is because you had three questions to answer on your research paper um i'm going to suggest that you evaluate one website that you used to answer each of the questions okay so that's like one web one website per question uh, because we need a minimum of three evaluation um, checklists from you so you input your URL here, and again, simply, just by going up to the top bar here, you would uh, highlight the URL, right-click, copy, and then paste that in there. Once you've done that, we then go down to the next section, where it says currency. Now, just so you know, each one of these sections uh, is explained in more detail in the website evaluation help sheet. So if I open this up... And this basically takes you through what each section means, okay? So obviously when we talk about currency, usually most people think that we're talking about money. In this instance, we're not. This refers to the timeliness of the information, i.e. Uh, was when when was the, the document produced, or when was the website produced, rather? When was it last updated? When was it last modified? How up-to-date are the links, okay? So when it comes to your evaluation... Were you able to source a date to ensure the results were up to date? Simply, yes, I was able to source a date um, which was 15th of the 19th. Job done. Okay. The next question, the reliability. How did you establish the results were reliable? Again, if you go back to your help sheet, which I should have down here. So when we're talking about the, the reliability, okay, essentially what this section is talking about is anybody that knows a little HTML coding uh, and has access to a server can easily create and load their own website, okay? Now, just because they can do that doesn't necessarily mean that the information they're putting on that website is correct. So it's important to understand the following, okay? It's really important to understand who is the author of the site. Uh, is contact information provided? The author should be accountable for his or uh, her or his work. Is there a link provided to their homepage? And also look for a reliable institution, i.e. is it a .com, is it a .edu, is it a .org, .gov, .mil, etc. Okay? So these domains normally mean that the site is maintained by a reputable organisation. Um, however, just always double check the uh, different things like the, the, who is the author, okay? So things that you may want to look out for is, is the author well respected in that field of study, depending on what it is that you're looking for. Um, if there's contact information provided, this usually indicates that that person doesn't mind people contacting them to maybe argue a point um, or to maybe ask more questions. Okay, doke. So this is the, the reliability bit here. So again, when it comes to this section here, you just want to put in the key information. Why do you think 
um, or how did you establish if the results were reliable or not? It could be with the author's well respected in his the uh, in his or her field. Um, it was a dot edu site, which means the site's well regulated, etc. etc. Right, the next way the next section is talking about bias. Okay. Um forget this helps you up again. So in the bias section, th these are things to consider. Does the site promote one product? Uh, does it state one opinion over another? Try to win you over net any other way. So when people creating uh, when people are creating websites, um especially when selling their products, you would kind of class that as that website having a bias towards that product. So basically they're saying this product is the best, you must buy this product, it's the leading brand, it's this, it's that, okay? That'd be a bias. However, whenever you're conducting research, you must make sure that you're getting the full picture and not just um, one opinion, okay? So it's really important that you establish that the website does not promote that, okay? And these are just some of the points that you can put in there. A uh, or some of these are just some of the points that you can use to help identify that. Um, again, when it comes to the relevance section of the a uh, document, the things we were looking for here is what is the depth and breadth of the information offered? They should be relevant to the subject matter. Uh, are there links to other useful and reliable websites? So again, in this section here, you're just talking about. Um, were the results relevant to, the, to their original search criteria. So, if you remember right, one of the first lectures I had with you guys was when you came up with your questions, literally, if you copied and pasted that question into Google, a bunch of results would have came up. Uh, so essentially, how relevant was that search, uh, or sorry, how relevant was that website in response to that original search? Um, did it filter out irrelevant information? etc okay again not looking for a lot of information here just always a, a sentence or two um just giving me the information of um why it was relevant appropriate format again formats of a site is really important okay whenever someone creates a website it's usually for a target audience uh, and it's really important that the format of that website suits that target audience so for example if um, you're looking for something really specific. Um, so in fact, you know what, let's use the college website as an example. So, if I put this up to here. Right, so right away, look at the college website. So on the left hand side here, I've got the college logo. So I know for a fact I'm in the proper site. Up the very top here, I've got different tabs. Now these tabs are very specific. So it's telling me I can either go to my My Day, obviously for students. If I've got an application, I go right to my application. If I'm staff, I can go right to the staff portal. Uh, I can sign up, I can uh, look at the news, I can then I've got a contact us section as well as some social media, okay? This is a really good example of a well formatted website, okay? It's not talking in jargon, it's not talking in kind of a high academic terms. Um, I can easily navigate my way around this site um, and again if you look at the next section of this is was the site easy to navigate and again this is just a really good example of an of a, a site that navigates easy and again one of the main things I always like to point out every college website should always have the course search here because um, it'll be mostly students visiting this website to see what courses the college offer um, so yep again if you just type in here um, about the format and what does it say easy to navigate around. Lastly, review. Based on the results found, would you have amended your search criteria? So if you didn't find the information needed, would you? What what would you change uh, in your original search criteria? So your question, that's what that's talking about. However, if you did find the information, um, that's great. So based on the Based on the results found, would you have amended your search criteria? The answer there would be no. So I hope you found that helpful guys and what I'll do is I'm going to create another video showing you how to combine all these documents together for one uh, document. Okay guys, thanks. See you soon.